Maybe you just graduated from university or some coding bootcamp, or maybe you're just a self-taught programmer. Either way, you want to have a resume that stands out and amazes every recruiter out there such that you get the interview. Well, I'm going to give you no less than 5 tips on how to sell yourself best through the projects in your resume, so make sure you stick until the end of this video, you'll thank me later. Let's start. Tip number 1. The number of projects you need in your resume really depends on the amount of work experience or maybe internship experience that you have. I know, I know, you want me to answer the most controversial question out there. Andy, how many projects should a good resume have? Well, I also used my LinkedIn connections to gather different opinions on this and the numbers are really interesting. But before showing you the results, let's actually remember what is the purpose of adding a project in your resume in the first place. A project is really meant to show people that you are passionate about software engineering and that you have skills they are also interested in and of course that you can build stuff. So if you don't have a lot of work experience, projects are really important but if you do, the more that speaks for itself. And now the results. Give me a drum. If you have no experience at all, then three good projects that you are really enthusiastic about should do the job. If you have one internship, then two projects should be enough. From two to four years of industry experience, then what good project is a sure way to get the interview. And if you have more than four years of industry experience, first of all, sir, my hat off to you. You probably won't need any project at all in your resume. You probably already get offers left and right, messages on LinkedIn. So yeah, don't worry about that. In conclusion, I would stick to one saying that I've heard in one of these YouTube videos. The more junior you are, the more projects you're gonna need. The more senior you are, the fewer projects you are going to need. Tip number two. You want a project which a recruiter or a hiring manager reading your resume is going to be able to grasp very quickly and be super impressed by at first glance. Now, very important, this doesn't translate into the most technically complex project. You can have a super smart project, and I bet you do, but if it's really hard to understand why it's so technically complex, if it's not visual, if it's not easy to grasp, well, it's probably going to be a very confusing experience for the recruiter, and they will go with a candidate which probably did a bubble sort, but very visual and in a friendly manner, and he will get the interview. We don't want that. You need to understand that easy to explain sells. Visuals always sell. Like I talked about a bubble sort algorithm, which is a simple algorithm, but if you animate well, how you start from the beginning at the list and always compare each two adjacent elements and swap their positions if they're not in the right order. Something which is very easy to grasp in reading, combined with great visuals, will get the job done, even if it's not the most technically complex algorithm out there. Tip number three. Make the project's descriptions very concise and easy to understand. In order to test this, take one of your friends which is preferably non-technical or a technical friend which doesn't know anything about the project and have him read your description. If after reading it, he will be very confused and ask a lot of questions, then trust me, the recruiters will also be confused. One bonus tip regarding this that I'm also going to give you here is prepare 30 second pitches for each of the projects. Let's see you get the interview, definitely you are going to be asked about the projects. So, if the recruiter or the HR person is non-technical, you want to make sure that after 30 seconds, they don't have any questions, they are not confused and everything goes smooth. Tip number four, an interviewer is likely to look at the first project on your resume, so make sure that you highlight the one that you are most passionate about and that you are ready to talk about it in a lot of depth. Make sure you are ready to talk about the skills that you applied in that project, how you thought about it, what kind of routes you could have chosen, and trust me, be enthusiastic as hell, they love that. And tip number five, don't feel discouraged if you feel like in a way your project is not legit or trivial, or maybe the code that you've written is not the cleanest, uh, most performant code on planet Earth. Just remember what you are trying to achieve with that project. If you are a college or coding bootcamp student or graduate, they won't expect you to come to them with the next unicorn, with a very professional website with a lot of clients and which is doing very well. And that's in regards to the idea. Now, regarding the code, thank people most probably won't look for your code, right? They have hundreds of resumes, they don't have the time and human resources to do that. But small startup people probably will. Because if you join a small startup, you will basically be part of the foundational team so they really worry about how you think, how you write code and how you solve problems. This being said, do your best, write good code, 
but don't obsess over it. Don't spend months of extra time trying to write perfect production-ready code which is clean and efficient when you can use that precious time to prepare for the actual interview. And now, in respect to you because you have watched this video until this point, I'm going to share a bonus tip with you. And that is school versus non-school projects. If you have gone through a coding bootcamp or a university, then you have probably worked in a team and built some really cool projects with your colleagues and your contribution was really appreciated. What you need to know is that school projects are very good because they showcase your ability to work in a team. But one little caveat here. Make sure that you highlight really well what was your contribution in that project. For example, you could have worked on backend, frontend, you could have been the manager. Make sure you write it in the description. And also make sure that you add in your resume at least one project that you have worked on by yourself. Personally, I really love the balance of adding at least one team project because when I talk about it, I'm going to gain HR points. Why? Because I have my 30 second pitch ready. I'm going to talk about some different conflicts maybe where different colleagues have different opinions and how I was able to intermediate this process to express my opinions in a friendly way such that we used the best technology out there and also everybody was happy. So with all that, these are my top tips on programming projects that every student should have in his resume. If you found anything helpful in this video, make sure to smash that like button. Let's shock the algorithm. It really helps me and helps a lot of people to also watch this amazing content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't and make sure to turn on the notification bell if you want to catch the latest videos that I'm going to make on becoming a better software engineer, passing your coding interviews and getting your dream job. It's free, it shows me a lot of support and appreciation from you guys and you can unsubscribe anytime that you'd like. With that said, I'll see you on the next one. End out.